and happy Monday. It's Jackie Broman here from TBA Law. So I come to you live most Mondays, giving you a small legal information tidbit. Um, this is the second of a five part series that I'm doing on tenancies. Um, if you go back and have a look at all the videos I've saved in Facebook, there's a whole lot of them on estate planning and deceased estates because that's my area of specialty. But TBA Law also does a whole lot of property work and so I did a short series on conveyancing and transferring land and now I'm doing a short series on tenancy. So last week I spoke about the types of tenancy, so looking at residential tenancy, retail tenancy and then industrial tenancy. Today I want to talk about what rights tenants have during the tenancy. So I suppose it comes in terms of rights and ob obligations that they have during tenancy. So the main right a tenant has, whether it's a retail tenancy or a residential tenancy, is to quiet enjoyment. So that means that the landlord can't come around all the time wondering what's going on. Um, if the landlord wants to inspect, they have to provide notice and otherwise the tenant has to be left alone to enjoy the property. So that is essentially what that means. Um, charges. So obviously a tenant has to pay rent, but what else does a tenant have to pay for? So under the residential tenancies, a tenant has to pay for their usage of services. And that's about it. Under retail tenancy, the tenant has to pay all outgoings. So that includes rates, water rates, um, most things to do with bringing the property up to OH&S. They just don't have to pay for land tax. For the residential tenant, they don't have to pay rates, they don't have to pay water rates. All they have to do is pay their usage on gas, electricity, water. Um, what else? Duties and rights. So a tenant's only allowed to use the property for what they've been permitted to use it for. So that includes residential premises as well. So a tenant can't just go and start using the house for a business. Uh, they can't bring in other people that aren't approved to also live there by the landlord. Same thing for a retail premises. So in the retail lease, it will say exactly what the uh, lease is permitted for and the tenant can't go using the property for something else. Um, they can use it for things that are ancillary to the main purpose. Um, like if it's a retail premises, they can also store the stuff that they're selling on site. Um, but again, they can't just start doing a secondary business which is completely different under the same roof. Um, other things that a tenant shouldn't do is cause damage to the property. Um, they have to keep the property clean. So the property has to be handed over in the same state when the lease finishes. So they have to keep it fairly clean and maintained during the lease. Um, it's only fair wear and tear that is allowed to occur. Um, a tenant can't alter the property without the consent of the landlord and the tenant cannot change the locks without consent of the landlord and providing a key to the landlord as well. So those are the main things in terms of duties and obligations of a tenant. Now in terms of repairs, it's also very different for retail tenants versus residential tenants. So for a residential tenant, they have to main the, maintain the property to a certain degree, but realistically any repairs have to be done by the landlord. And so the legislation divides repairs into urgent repairs and non-urgent repairs. So with non-urgent repairs, you really need to go through your um, Real, the real estate agent who's managing the property and tell them, you know, there's something that needs to be fixed. Um, if you're not really getting anywhere, you can prepare a formal notice, which the 
real estate agent might not do for you because realistically the real estate agent is acting for the landlord. So you can prepare a notice about what repairs are required, serve it on the landlord, and then they have 14 days to either inspect and give you feedback or repair it. If they don't do either of those things, you can apply to Consumer Affairs and have Consumer Affairs do a inspection, which is done for free, and they provide a report to both yourself and the landlord. And then if still nothing's done, you've then got a right to go to BCAP. So that's non-urgent repairs. Urgent repairs. When you go into the property when you first lease it, you should be given an emergency phone number. It's probably the number for your um, real estate agent. So urgent repairs have to be fixed straight away, right? Um, if they're not fixed, then you as the tenant are allowed to fix them. However, you should only do repairs that cost up to $1,800 because you cannot um, or you're not entitled to re get reimbursed for anything more than $1,800 from the landlord. So what are things that might require an urgent repair? A gas leak, a water leak, um, a major roof leak, a busted toilet system, uh, a serious electrical fault. So these sort of things that are dangerous or make the property um, difficult to inhabit basically. So they, those are urgent repairs. So if an urgent repair is not done promptly, you go ahead and do it so long as it doesn't cost more than $1,800, then you serve the paperwork on the landlord that you've done it along with the receipts and they have to reimburse you within 14 days of getting that notice. If um, the repairs are gonna cost more than $1,800, you should go to VCAT. Go to VCAT, get an order for the urgent repairs to be done. Um, now the payment of rent and the fixing of repairs are two completely separate things. You cannot withhold rent if things aren't repaired. You can be kicked out of your house for not paying rent even if things aren't being repaired. So you can't offset rent with um, the reimbursement of repairs. Separate issue. Uh, for retail tenants, completely different. So retail tenants are pretty much obliged to do repairs themselves. All maintenance and repairs are on the retail tenant unless it's a structural issue and then the landlord gets called on. So there you go. The difference between um, retail and residential are quite stark. Um, there's so much more obligation on a retail tenant. Residential tenants are very protected. Um, but yeah, those are the basically the rights and obligations of a tenant during a tenancy. So I hope that's helpful. I will post this video into Facebook so it's there permanently if you need to go back and look at it or if there is someone else who you think you should tag it in because it's relevant for them. Um, otherwise, next week is the um, landlord rights and obligations during a tenancy. So we'll cover that off next week. Um, so until then, I hope you have a great week and I will see you next Monday. Bye.